Ordinary people can make extraordinary change in the world. Take Niels Bowen, for example. He was an engineer in the 1950s and invented the three-point seatbelt, which now saves over 15,000 people every year from dying in car crashes. Or Lily Ledbetter. She worked at a tire company for about 20 years, then sued the company when she found out that she was being paid less than her male coworkers. After losing the suit in the Supreme Court, Congress passed the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, changing better law to better protect women in the workplace. Or Nicholas Winston, he worked a regular job on the stock exchange, but devoted every second of his spare time to saving Jewish children during the Holocaust. He saved 669 children. Niels Bowen, Lily Ledbetter, and Nicholas Winston were ordinary people, yet they still created extraordinary change in the world. And with social media at our fingertips, it's never been easier for everyday people to get together, grassroots style, and say, hey, if you care about this, then let's do something. My name is Sophie Egar, and today I'm going to be talking about how social media has affected activism. Raise your hand if you have Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Most of us do, right? According to estimates, the number of worldwide social media users reached 2.34 billion and is expected to grow some 2.95 billion by 2020. The average person has five social media accounts and spends almost two hours browsing these networks every single day. Now, it's important to note that these photos, hashtags, whatever you post, it matters. Whether it's a photo of your lunch from that trendy new vegan place, or a viral video, or just a photo of you with your friends, every post says something about who you are and what you stand for. So it's no surprise that politics play a part in that too. Me Too, Black Lives Matter, the Women's March, the gun violence walkouts, Social media has been at the forefront of so many movements in modern day America and in other countries around the world too, some of which that don't have freedom of speech. Social media creates unedited communities for people to fight against tyranny, intolerance, and injustice to bring about empathy, integrity, and truth. Social media unites like-minded people to demand public scrutiny inform the masses, and coordinate the logistics of their solution, all over a screen. Simply put, social media has revolutionized activism. What's interesting about online activism, though, is that it's become a part of mainstream culture now. It's cool to go to March and post a picture of your sign on Instagram. Unfortunately, what happens too often is that people don't go to that march. They don't go to town halls, they don't boycott corrupt companies, they don't call their legislators, most importantly, they don't show up to vote. Only 56% of eligible voters went to the polls during the 2016 election. Almost half of America did not vote. Instead, they tweeted the hashtag, or shared a video, forgot about it, and went along their merry way. In June of 2014, Shonda Rhimes said it best. She's the creator, writer, and executive producer of Grey's Anatomy and gave a commencement speech to Dartmouth, in which she told students to pick a cause they love, go out into the world, and devote real time to it. During her speech, Rhimes said, a hashtag is not helping. Hashtag yes all women, hashtag take back the night, hashtag not all men, hashtag stop pretending hashtags are the same as doing something. Hashtags are very pretty on Twitter, but a hashtag is not a movement. A hashtag does not make you Dr. King. A hashtag does not change anything. It's a hashtag. It's you sitting on your butt, typing in your computer, and then going back to binge watching your favorite show. See, social media activism, which I like to call slacktivism, is useless if it doesn't create awareness that leads to action off the internet. So 
then the question becomes, how do we turn a hashtag conversation into a real one? How do we turn slacktivism into real activism? Well, the first step is identifying an issue that you care about. Find out what disturbs you, what infuriates you, and then step two, get informed about it. Read articles, take classes on issues related to your cause, listen to the people most affected, talk to other activists. Keep in mind, it's equally as important to talk to people on the other side of your issue and realize that you can disagree with their opinion while still respecting them as a human being. Then, step three, vote. Find out which politicians support the same policies as you do, and then vote. If you're able to vote and don't, then you really can't complain. Step four is setting ambitious but realistic goals about what you want to see happen and how to realistically get there. For instance, halting human-caused climate change is a noble goal, but it's too broad to be directionally actionable. You can, however, advocate for tougher emission standards for vehicles and industries in your area. Um, and one way to set ambitious but realistic goals is by joining or starting an organization that supports your cause. Then volunteer your money, and most importantly, volunteer your time. Justice isn't some weekly trend, so if we want to see long-lasting improvement in the issues we care about, we have to lead by example. If there's one thing I want you to all leave here remembering, it's that history isn't made with a hashtag. Rather, it's been formed by masses of faceless and nameless people that had nothing more than a cause they believed in and a willingness to fight for it, no matter how difficult it was or how long it took. Thank you.